Appy was a man that made enough man manners themselves in the race because Garage was a was a rave that was a was a was a a scene where you just wanted to come for the good times. You didn't really want no badness in there or fights in there or nothing like that. And even the man that used to hold the door, Freddie Daly, um, Tyson, not Junction Tyson, the other Tyson. You get me? Um, so much different man that used to hold doors. There was a lot of manners that used to happen in Coliseum and Bagley's and Adrenaline Village and, you know, certain of them raves there. Mm. But there was dances that the man them done that they weren't making music to, bro. Mm. There were some real skanks <laughs> that the man them done, which I don't know, I don't know, the producers weren't just making songs to it. So bro, I was in my yard making Oh No Fam and I was skanking to how I wanted the beat to be. Imagine that. I remember the raves of how all of us used to be in the raves and do a certain dance. Mm. Boom, 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 boom. And, mm -hmm. and skank and, you know what I mean? Like, it was a different, people used to do the cheesy one, but the man them used to do a different one. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and skank it and, and that's how I made the beat because I, because I looked at how we used to dance and said, no, nah, we need to make music for the way we dance. You get me? And that's how Ono came about. And that was the first tune that I gave to PDS on dub plate. And that's what kind of blew, blew up the whole, the whole vibe. Mm. It's like when we're in the rave, unless you're going to play a song to the way how us men dance, we don't want to hear, we don't want to hear the rest of the rave. You know what I mean? So DJ started to take the song, take the beats, and then we just started to make more and more beats like that. And then the Soul Solid sound was created from there. Mm. Looking how us black people wanted to dance, how we done brought the coolness to garage and the street shit to garage. And that was it, man. Did you get a deal for that one? Burn the thing. Yeah, so I got a single deal for that. And again, blood, I just didn't feel right. I just did. I just said, this isn't about me. It's about my crew. Mm. Yeah. We was making like, we were selling like 10, 30,000 units off of white labels before getting signed. Mm. Me and Carton, Carton had a little bit more money than me them times, but we had to put like 15 grand into Garage Delight to put up on per rave. Oh, for real? Yeah, 15 grand, you had to pay everybody. You had to pay for the venue, seven bags plus, pay for flyers, teletext posters, all of that sort of stuff. And we would make 25K, 35K off of a rave. So like, we're doubling up. This is, we're teenagers, we're 18, 19 years old. Mm. <laughs> and we're doubling up, Carton's younger than me, so he's 16, 17, and we're putting on the biggest garage raves. But our dads used to hold the door like Rusters, not my dad, but his dad and his brethren and that. He used to hold the door, bomba clata, my son rave this, bomba. So this is why we didn't get robbed. You know what I mean, in those times, so doing that and just burning down, turning over so much money as young youths. When the labels came, they couldn't hand us small money. They had to hand us like a serious amount of money at that time. Yeah, it was mad. So I got the single deal and then I turned my single deal into the cruise deal. You know what I mean? And that's when the second, the second single for So Sully was 21 Seconds. Because what happened was like, they saw a poster of Oh No billboards all over the UK and they saw me, Lisa and Romeo and the hood was vex. The hood was vex. Battersea, Junction, bear people like, what? Fuck this, what, what do you mean? There's bear man in Soul Solid. How come there's only you three with the, with the logo? Oh, and man was vex. Internal, external, bro. Mums, dads, everyone. <laughs> what, we've got bare vinyls, we've got our own radio station, we've got the biggest, one of the biggest garage raves going on at that time. And there's three men on TV, yeah. even though everyone's in the video on that, but the posters don't represent everyone. Mm. And then they're saying, who's this Lisa girl? Mm. Never seen her in her life, never heard on radio station, but she's so solid. Who is she? Black gal in the ends were back. <laughs> what, you know what? You know, our certified gal in the ends, like, Vex, like what? Is that what you lot are doing? Like, did she get in the crew then? Yeah. Because she was going out with G-Man at the time. Lisa came into the crew because she was my son's mother's friend. Yeah. You get me, Jaleen, big up Jaleen. Yeah, she's from Brixton. That was my son's mother's friend. Lisa's from Brixton. So they, they went through school having to take care of Lisa's interests. And if you was a light skinned girl from Brixton, enough man used to want to. Yeah, you're pretty, come here, man. You know what I mean? And if he wasn't strong on the internal, 
people would want to take advantage of the prettiest girl around around town. So most pretty girls ended up not not becoming who they wanted to be because of a lot of street environments and stuff like that. And most of the dark skin girl them had to rough up and dress a bit. You know what I mean? Rude and rude girl up and them thing there to even cut through. Enough girls know what I'm talking about. So those times were different. Those times were techie techie. Enough man was smoking coke and like you know what I mean? And it was it was a techie techie time. Like that, fam. So to grow up in those areas was very touchy, especially if you didn't have a father figure in the house. Mm. You know what I mean? So it was difficult for them, but Jaleen introduced Lisa to, to G-Man. G-Man wasn't a man that I felt could get better girl anyway. Even though he had this physique and everything, he just wasn't maybe that confident. So when he bucked up on Lisa, it was like, yeah, man, this is me, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, that, you know what I mean? <laughs> so that was cool. And then when I wanted to sing her on the song, because I, my lyric is, it's just a little thing, the sentimental. I used to MC that on radio all the time. But when I made the song, I didn't want to go on the song doing that. Like Romeo spitting bars, and I have to do the, and I'm doing, it's just a little, nah, that's not happening on my first tune. So, <laughs> yeah, so I had to draw for Lisa. Bust there still. Yeah, underneath draw for Lisa and, yeah, and make that cut through, you get me? Mm. So that's how that come about, man. And then, um, yeah, everyone was vexed. So G, man, I, went, I remember after hearing that, I went to the label and said, look, we need the next song, we need as much people as on the song. Mm -hmm. And they was like, look, as long as you fit it within a certain amount of time, mm. you lot can do that. Imagine that. You get me? So, so you got the idea for 21 seconds? G-Man kind of made up the idea, but I went back to them and said, look, we've got this amount of time to fit everyone in. Mm. So if, if man can fit everyone in on that amount of time, cool. And G-Man had a guy called Synth underneath his wing from, he was in Battersea that time. Yeah. And he was an African guy, like he is an African guy, just a producer and that. But the man them used to come to me with demos that used to sound so shit. Mm -mm. Like if you ever listen to, if you ever listen to Oh No. Hello. <laughs> your brother's a, your brother's a bad boy. Yeah, no, come, 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 come. Oh. Follow your brother, man. Follow your brother, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, if you ever listen to, to Twenty One Seconds in its original format, mm -hmm. you would have made it a single, bro. Mm. You would have said, "Fuck that! I'm not, I'm not spitting on this." Mm. You know what I mean? But I had I had a publishing deal and a label there at the time, so I made everybody use the studio in um in West End, EMI Studios. Mm. It's and um, what yeah. would happen? Everybody would come and lay their vocals down, lay all the songs down, and then I would be left in the studio so, so to finish goes, it up yeah. with the with the engineer. You know what I mean? To make sure the beat sounded nice, the bass line was fatter, the drums were. I was kind of that person on most of so Is everyone music. happy where they came on the song? Where, where, you know what well, I'm it talking? wasn't like that, you know. The original one, um, <coughs> Scat D was lost. Mm. The original version, Scat D's lost. But because me, Lisa and Romeo was on the single, mm -hmm. they said to keep the public interested, the label, you know how the labels are. Mm -hmm. Keep mm -hmm. the public history. You, Maga, you go first, put Lisa in the middle and Romeo at the end. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of had to reformat it. And, and it, it didn't worked. have a chorus. Keisha's verse was a verse. Mm -hmm. Keisha's part of the verse. And they said, nah, it needs a hook. Mm -hmm. So we just looked at Keisha's part and said, nah, that's, that's the hook. I got 21 seconds to go. Yeah. 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 That would have been better as a chorus still. Better as a chorus, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. So I said, look, that Keisha's one, that's the chorus. And then bam, the rest is history. Yeah.